So um, I think that all, all of you guys bring up a, a great point there and that I think that kind of an underlying theme that everyone is addressing is that it seems like one of, you know, as we think about how we can really add value for entrepreneurs listening tonight is that it seems, you know, for like each uh, company, there's, there's a handful of decisions that you need to make, you know, based on wherever it is that you are and, the cons you know, and, and the sort of uh, company that you have and whatever that your goals are, and, you know, weighing all of those things and, and then looking at the marketplace or the industry in which you're operating as well and uh, in, in considering maybe what the best uh, path is, you know, for you. And uh, um, so, Sam, I'd be curious just because, um, well, because I'm curious, uh, that I'd, I'd like to hear maybe you just talk about, uh, since we've touched on like the, the, the no help desk issue of, of open source or things like that, maybe you could just weigh in briefly like on some of the, the pros and the cons of, of, uh, of utilizing open source from, from your vantage point with the sort of service business that you have. Yeah, um, I'll go back to the coin example because it's just the most recent. Um, someone else contributed code and wanted to help out, but they were actually just trying to steal coin. But we didn't figure that out until a little bit later um, while we vetted this code. So you get good and bad, that, bad, bad actors everywhere. Um, I guess the equivalent to the help desk in the open source space would be like forums. Um, one, of my, one of my engineers fundamentally believes that if you don't know how to code in 15 years, you're going to be on food stamps. I wouldn't really go that far. Um, but we are seeing an increased presence of developers, right? My, my sister who, she has a hard time sending emails. She now wants to go to a boot camp to, you know, learn to JavaScript or Luber, Ruby on Rails. Um, so I don't know if that's indicative um, of like a more open source community in general. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but I've experienced its, its utility firsthand. Um, you do have to be careful because again, it's, it's kind of like, uh, they call crypto the wild west, but you know, you're on the internet, it's, it's the internet. Um, so you have to tread cautiously, but um, yeah, I think it's incredibly useful to kind of take the MVP model of this is what I have, iterate, this is what I have, iterate, again and again, have people, normally you have your users break it, but you could really just have developers break it if you have open source code. Um, so so <coughs> one, one point that that brings up, and maybe it comes up later, is um, mission critical systems and open source tend to be at odds, like, anything that utilizes open source in a mission critical application, whether it's you know, automotive, aerospace, defense, uh, healthcare, financial, usually you take an open source thing and you clean it all up and you fix all the stuff and you formal methods around it to the point that the thing at the end is effectively proprietary and it's not intentionally so. It's just that it's, you need a very clean environment to operate certain types of things. And so that is one of the challenges that open source faces and uh, there are a number of different like DARPA programs right now around trying to make that cleaner, um, particularly on reusable hardware ultra IP cores, but it's just a, let's all, it's great to see the iter iterative like uh, <coughs> breaking and, 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 and uh, bug bounty type things, but how does that work when if we release something and it doesn't work, someone dies? Um, Okay. You know, I might throw in one final comment, which is at the end of the day, like if you're building a company, you have to understand what your strategy is, right? It's like there's a lot of, whether it's patents or PR, like one of the big things that, you know, if you think about it, a lot of people always want to get their startup covered in TechCrunch, right? So it makes them feel good, right? But does it actually do anything for your company, right? No, generally not. <laughs> 